Welcome to SVG Particles. Today I'm going to show you how to make this fun little particle effect where all these balls sort of pop out from the center, they get scaled differently each time the animation repeats, and it's just a lot of fun. So we're going to go really quick through the artwork setup because I've shown you how to draw gradients and create text before in SVG animation with green sock. So once we get through the quick little art review, we'll dive right into the code and I'll show you how we make this with just a few lines of timeline code. Let's get going. Let's start out with a review of our artwork. We're at the stage of this course where you don't need to see me drawing simple shapes. So let me just give you a quick tour of the objects we'll be using. First up, we have this background, which is just a rectangle with a gradient fill. Next, we have this group that contains the different balls that will be flying up in the air. Let me crack it open and you'll see that we have a bunch of ellipses here. Now they're all sitting on top of each other in the same spot, but I just want to show you that I did create them by hand and I did pick out the colors. Of course, we could create them programmatically, but I wanted to build this pretty quick and just show you a fun little way to make a particle effect. Next up, we have the main text which is just this word, congrats. Beneath that, I have what I'm calling the dark shadow, which is another rectangle filled with a gradient, but you'll see that it goes from full black on the bottom to sort of this semi-transparent gray up here. That gives us a nice effect of some depth. And lastly, we have the text reflection, which is just a copy of the text flipped over, squashed, with a little bit of transparency set in. Now the one thing I want to point out is that when I'm naming the objects over here, these are just names that I come up with to help track my assets in Boxy SVG while I'm working. They do not refer to IDs or classes in the source code. So I just want to show you that for the balls group that I have here, that if we go to the meta panel, this is where I've assigned it the ID of balls. And what I'm going to do is use JavaScript to select every ellipse inside of that group. So now that we have an idea of how the file is set up, let's hop over to CodePen. So here in CodePen, I already have my SVG in place. I'm putting it inside a wrapper div right now. You'll notice that things are set up so that it scales very nicely on window resize. And really the only thing you need to know about the SVG code is that we have this group with the ID of balls and inside of it we have all of these ellipses, which are the things we're going to be animating. Over in the CSS, nothing too crazy. You will see that my SVG is going to start with an opacity of zero. And then in the JavaScript, when everything's loaded, we're just going to fade it in with a nice little opacity tween. You'll see that in a moment. I've got some boilerplate code here that you don't need to see me typing. I'm setting up a balls variable where we're going to select every ellipse inside of that balls group. We've got a timeline set up and that timeline right now is going to target the balls and animate them to a Y of negative 100 which makes them go up and this stagger object here is going to allow each ball to go up and then repeat in yo-yo which means it's going to come back down. And there's also code in place that we can click in the document and we will restart our timeline. So on a refresh, what you'll see is a slight little fade there and all those balls went up and down. If I click, you'll see they all go up and down again. So again, this is all basic stuff we've done before, but I want to point out how we're going to make it better. Well, the first thing I want to do is while this animation is playing, I want to send these balls to random X positions to the left and to the right. So I'm going to add another tween to the timeline where we're going to do a two tween. Again, the target will be our balls. And for their X values, we're going to call on GSAP's random powers. And let's just do a value between negative 200, which will go to the left, and positive 200, which will go to the right. We want these animations to be synchronized with the previous staggers. So what we're going to do is also give them a stagger amount of 0.1, but we don't need these animations to repeat. We don't want them going to the left and then coming back to the right, because that would look pretty silly. Now, although this code still needs some work, let's take a look at what it does. You're going to see the balls go up and down, and then they move sort of in these weird horizontal ways. 
You didn't catch it? That's okay. I can click to restart. They all go up, and then they all spread out in a very weird fashion. Well, the reason for that is we want this group of staggers to happen at the same time this group of staggers starts. So we do need a position parameter here of zero, and this is gonna get closer to what we want, but there's still going to be a little bit of an issue. We'll click. Hmm. You notice how they all sort of go up and spread, but then they all just fall straight down, right? They get to their highest point and then just drop as if they're all hitting sort of a wall. Doesn't look very natural. And the reason for this is that the tweens moving left and right are ending as soon as the balls reach their highest Y position, okay? They just stop moving left and right after 0.5 seconds, whereas these tweens are animating for a total of one second. Remember, the default duration of an animation is half a second. And since this tween here is repeating once with a yo-yo, it's going to take half a second to move up and then half a second to move down. Whereas left to right, we're only moving for one half a second and then abruptly stopping, and then they're just going to drop wherever they are. So since each ball is animating up and down for a total of one second here, we want the horizontal tweens to also have a duration of one. And now you'll see that they are not dropping so abruptly, okay? There's more of a curved arc to their animation. However, you may see that sort of at the end of the animations, there is sort of a bit of a very steep drop off, okay? Well, the reason for that is that as we're moving to the left and right, there's a default ease of power one out, okay? So as a ball is moving to the right, it's going to be slowing down a little bit towards the end, and that's why there isn't much horizontal movement towards the end of these tweens, regardless of whether they're moving to the left or to the right. So another fix we can do here is to give this tween here an ease of none. And now we'll have a constant rate of change to the left and to the right. And this is starting to look way better already, okay? They're not just abruptly stopping their horizontal motion to drop out of the sky. Everything's looking pretty nice. Hey there, Carl Schoof here. I'm so glad you made it this far. If you're enjoying the video, please do the typical like, comment, subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. If you want to learn more about GSAP and take your creative coding skills to the next level, please visit creativecodingclub.com. I've created over 250 lessons to help developers just like you discover the joy of animating with code and bring their web projects to life. I'll teach you everything I know about GSAP, Scroll Trigger, SVG animation, responsive animations, and so much more. Check out creativecodingclub.com today, and now let's get back to the video. To make this even better, I think we should go ahead and randomize the scale of the balls. What I'm going to do is add a tl.set at the beginning of the animation, and all the balls are going to be given a random scale. And now, look at that. We got some small balls and some bigger ones. It's looking really, really nice. Now the only thing I have a little bit of an issue with is the fact that these balls can still be seen in their ending state, and when you refresh, you know, there's sort of this harsh jump back to the beginning with everything. They sort of all disappear and then shoot out of the middle again. And what I want to address first is the fact that we're seeing sort of the lower part of these balls here where they kind of overlap that dark shadow at the bottom. I would like them to not only cut off, but completely disappear behind this text that says congrats. So to do that, we're gonna move back into Boxy SVG and add a mask. So over here in Boxy, I want to create a mask so that I do not see the balls group below this sort of line that's caused by the dark shadow bottom. So I'm going to just grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle that looks like this. We're gonna go right down to there. I'm going to go to the stroke settings, remove the strokes, and for the fill, I'm going to make it full on white 
so that everything that overlaps with the mask area will be 100% visible and everything outside of it will not be visible at all. Now I'm going to go over to my objects panel, which you've seen me do before, and I'm going to take this new rectangle that I drew, just bring it up to where the balls group is. I'm going to click on the balls group, shift click on rectangle, and then in the compositing panel, we're going to hit mask. Now, if you're new to this, definitely check out my clipping and masking chapter. We've done this a whole bunch of times, but now you'll see we no longer see that big white rectangle. And most importantly, we don't see any of that ball underneath this sort of line right here. So now what I can do is just right click on my SVG code, copy outer SVG, jump back into code pen. And now let me just make this window a bit bigger here. We'll go to my HTML. I'm going to collapse the SVG tag so that it's very easy to select and delete. Paste in my new SVG that has the masking in place. I'm going to get rid of the width and height so that we can fill up the entire browser window. And now the masking should be in place. Hard to see at this size, but clearly you can see that all those little balls get cut off exactly on that line. It's looking pretty good. We'll click a few more times. And now it's clear that we will not see any of the balls beneath where that rectangle was. Now you may notice that since this one is small here, it's sort of sticking up and I don't want to see any of these balls at all when the animation is done. So to do that, I'm going to start them from a lower Y value. So let's go back to where we can read the code a bit, pop into the JavaScript and in this set here, I'm going to tell every ball that it's going to start out at a Y of, we'll say 50 right now, which should push it down a bit. And now at the current scale, you're going to see that we do not see the balls after they fall, what looks like behind that shadow, okay? None of them are sitting around anymore, and this is really looking quite good. And before we wrap up, I'm going to add one more feature. Repeat and randomize. So right now I love the effect, but if you watch that red ball, notice that it always just goes straight up and down. And that means that the entire animation is just, you know, restarting on click. There's no randomization on successive plays. Well, we can change that with just a little bit of code inside of the timeline constructor here. I'm going to set repeat to minus one, which will make it infinite, and repeat refresh to true. By setting repeat refresh to true, in technical terms, it invalidates these tweens and reruns those functions for fresh values. Now you'll see that red ball doing something different each time the animation plays, and of course, all of the different balls are doing something different. Now what you may also notice is that they're not coming up from the center anymore, okay? They're just coming up from wherever they left off on the x-axis. And quite honestly, this is a pretty neat sort of like a bubbling effect. But if we wanted them all to restart from this sort of x value in the center here, what we would have to do is reset that each time we rerun the timeline. So what I'm going to do is where I have the Y set to 50 here for each repeat or beginning of the timeline, I'm gonna reset the X to be zero. And now what you'll see is that they always come up from the center and they always go to a random position, okay? So I just think this is absolutely wonderful. Let's go in, watch it big. And now you can see that with just a few lines of code, we have this repeating, random, really fun little particle effect that only took a few minutes to build. Now when I have things repeat like this, I do like to have a way to pause them. So as you may have noticed, I actually have a code comment here called click to pause. And what we're going to do is instead of restarting now on click, we're going to toggle the paused state using this fun one-liner of tl.paused will be set to the opposite of the current paused state. And now I can click to pause and unpause. I just love it. And remember, it's little tricks like this 
that you'll learn all the time as a Creative Coding Club student. Thanks so much for your support. I'll see you in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I don't want to keep you much longer, but I do want you to know that I worked at Greensock back when this was their logo, okay? I was there when they started transitioning from Flash to JavaScript, and I was learning most of these tools before documentation even existed, all right? So I'm just creating lessons that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff, all right? I've taught thousands of developers how to master the basics of GSAP and use all their special tools, all right? I've been doing this for over 10 years, and uh, although the lessons might not always be the prettiest or the fanciest, I really want you to master the fundamentals so that when you see effects online, you can say, hey, you know what? I know what tools I need to build that, all right? So there's this old saying that says, if you want to learn how to build a house, grab a hammer and follow a home builder around for six months. Well, through my Creative Coding Club courses, that's basically what I'm allowing you to do, okay? I want you to jump in, do the lessons just a little bit each week, and you'll have an opportunity to see just how I would build these things, all right? I'll show you step by step. We'll look at the CSS, the HTML. I'll teach you some basic JavaScript tricks along the way. You don't have to be a front-end expert for this stuff, all right? I'm going to keep it simple, but you're going to be amazed at the results if you put in the time. So I welcome you to check out these courses and discover the joy of animating with code. See you in the club.